Welcome back to Live with the Mod, the Poet, powered by Revolution of One, where we have the greatest guests and most powerful conversations. And today is no different. Today, we have a very special guest on the program with us today. Uh, this woman's teachings and ideas and words resonate with me very deeply. We have an author, a speaker, a life coach, and the founder of the Soul Wealth Movement, Dr. Vicki Johnson. How are you doing today, family? I am well, Mod. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing good. I'm doing energy. I'm energized now that we got you on. And, and I just wanted to say, first and foremost, it's an honor and a blessing to have you on just to share a few moments Thank with you. us and, and share some soul wealth with us. So I really absolutely. Oh, my goodness. This is so exciting because like we talked about in the pre-chat just briefly, I, too, this is just congruent with where I am. And that is how I live my life. You know, my mm -hmm. word I believe everybody has a word that, that follows them. And my word is serendipity. Mm. You know, like, <laughs> I know <laughs> that Ooh. I am where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there, and with who. Mm. Because the patterns in my life have proven that. Mm. And that's really what soul wealth is about is evolving into a space of self-awareness that you are so aware of the blessings and the lessons mm -hmm. that you've already experienced that you take information from it right mm -hmm. and move forward that's what it's about so this is timely for me and in mm -hmm. alignment with where I am because my mission at this stage in my life is to flood the earth with soul wealth. And I have to tell you, and we'll get into it, the miracle of us even connecting. It was a miracle. Mm. It was mm. a miracle. It was a miracle. It was a manifestation mm. of something that I created with my words because words have power. It was a miracle that is, you know, evidence that mm. when you live, a certain way, mm. success is guaranteed. And that is why I'm just ecstatic mm. <laughs> to be here. And I'm putting myself in the revolution of one family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just adding myself to the community, even if it's tangentially, because I love the content. I love the spirit of it and what you stand for. So thank you for the opportunity today. Mm. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got my spirit up. I'm like, woo, I'm ready to go. And I, I had a question I wanted to start off with, but I'm actually going to take a whole nother like turn because I'm wondering how, how do we, and this is just a, a question that has been on my heart lately. How do, how do we decide to do something that we know is right, that we know we're supposed to do, but our feelings say something else. And I feel like that's what keeps us in that stuck period because we know something to be true. We know this is the truth. We know this is good for us, but we feel another type of way. How can we silence what we feel in the moment to experience what we know to be true? Well, that's what soul wealth is. It, it mm -hmm. actually was birthed out of third John in scripture where the scripture says God desires that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Mm -hmm. Your soul, my soul, our soul is the seat of our emotions. And so the download that I got from Holy Spirit when I started this work is that our lives can only be as healthy as the state of our emotions. Mm -hmm. right? And that lends itself to now exploring what emotional intelligence is. So we don't make decisions based on how we feel because feelings change. I officiate mm. weddings and I say to the, to the couple in front of me all the time, feelings change. Love is a choice. And sometimes, sometimes mm. marriage and or relationships have to run on the engine of quiet love, I call it. Because you're choosing this person over and over and over again, even when you don't like them, even when your feelings are like, I can't stand you, right? Mm. You're choosing to love them. That is what marriage is. It's not, I don't like you today, so we're over. Marriage is not dating. 
it's it's not you're my preference today and my preference is something else next month mm-hmm. or next year or 10 years from now. It is a perpetual choice. It is perpetual forgiveness. What does that have to do with the question you asked me? It is this. We don't make choices based on how we feel. This is why self-awareness is so important. I feel attracted to someone, right? Mm. Is it absolutely the best decision for me to make to act on what I feel? That's Mm. the question. When I go to the end of that decision, because what I say often to the women I mentor, when I'm speaking, when I'm teaching, is in every moment we live at choice. We get to make a decision. Like if I get to decide, does this feel good to me or not? I get to decide, yes, I'm attracted to this person. However, is it a good decision for me to act on what I feel? See, Mm. now I'm going down the continuum of emotional intelligence. I can have the feelings, feelings come and go. The next step of awareness and self-regulation, discipline, right? What is going to be the result of me making that choice? Is it going to work for me? Is it going to add to me? Or is it going to backfire? And I'm going to then have to endure consequences of my choices. Now I have to take personal responsibility for whatever the outcome is. And that's how I process that. That is the process and uh, rationalization, if you will, or reasoning that I go through with everything with everything in my life. That's how I got here. Mm. The weekend I did that interview, which was about almost four years ago, over four years ago, I forgot about it. Mm. I'm not even on TikTok. I don't even have a TikTok account. I did and I deleted it last (laughs) year. And a friend of mine called me and said, Vicky, you are viral on TikTok. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm. Like, and to make you laugh a little bit, I was like, I know it's not a crazy video of me doing something <laughs> crazy that I don't want the world to see. Like, cause I, that's not who I am, right? So yeah. I can check that box. I was like, of me doing what? No, I'm serious, Vicky. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna send you the clip. And when I saw it, I was like, and I don't even remember them videotaping that interview. Mm. I was just talking. I didn't even, I don't recall that it was being recorded for mm. video, right? That was seed in the ground. And that weekend I was in New York on the Karen Hunter show, did that interview, took a cab to LaGuardia, flew to Atlanta, spoke at a conference, left that conference and flew the next day to Fort Lauderdale to Mm. celebrate my high school basketball coach who was being um, honored. And and I was invited to surprise her at that particular affair. And I'm glad I did because she passed away two years later. Mm. Wow. See that? Can take that? Mm. So for me to get a call last week, almost four years later. And it's that, like, I distinctly remember that weekend. That's Mm -hmm. why I told you what my schedule was. I distinctly remember that weekend. And shout out to Karen Taylor Bass, who connected me with Karen Hunter, you know, and created that opportunity for me. I had no idea of mine. Mm -hmm. No idea. Like the, the clips that I've been seeing, I'm like, man, I was saying some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the blessing of when your words come back to bless you. Mm. That's what this is for me. That's why you got to watch your mouth because mm. death and life is in the power of mm. the tongue. You have mm. what you say. We create our lives with what we say. Every day we get to script what we desire. And one of my journal entries recently was I am so happy and grateful that my name is being passed around by people I don't even know. And Mm. soon the world will know what soul wealth is. That's what I've been Mm. writing in my journal. Mm. 
Mm. So to go viral on TikTok, be active on Instagram, you DM me. It goes mm. down in the DM, right? Mm. Yes. <laughs> in, in a good way. Yes, yes, because yes. Because the intention is set. And I knew immediately when I saw your message, when I read the first two words, I was like, I don't even know who this is, but it's a yes. I was at yes while I was reading your message. And that's why I responded immediately. I asked you questions like, what do I need to do? Where do I need to be? You know, and we're here. Mm. That's serendipity. Mm. Mm. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. (laughs) And and, and I'm just like, wow. Wow, you said it's a blessing when your words come back to bless you. Woo! Yep. That's something right there. That's revolution that's, one. That's what that's what you all mm. are about. It's yes. about words, right? Mm. And the words kind of seeping into the soil of your heart and the mm. soil of your soul, right? Mm. And just nourishing what's down there, giving it what it needs so that at the right time of harvest, it pops through, right? And it's blooming and it's producing and it's being fruitful with seed, right? Mm. With seeds. Because there's a difference between seeded watermelon and seedless watermelon. Mm. (laughs) You need Mm. seeded nutrients so that you can have a perpetual harvest. And our words are the same. Mm. When you're speaking, you want to be seeding your life seeding future generations with harvest that, that will sustain you in the future. So that, and this is so much for me. This is so much for me in the best way. And I'm super grateful. Mm, it just made me, it made me think about um, how, you know, um, in Christianity and in Islam, it talks about how the blessings can fall on the children, you know, from generation to generation, yes. fall down. Yes. And when you're saying the blessing of your words coming back to bless you, it's like I've experienced that in my own life. That's why I resonate with it so deeply. Just friendships that my mom has made, that my father has made, and then even my father passing. And then when I meet people, they're like, you Mark's son? And I'm like, yes, I am. And it's love just because of a word he gave came back to bless me. You know, yes. a connection I was able to have, a friendship I was able to form from some words that came back to bless me. And I'm just like, wow, it's it's just amazing. It's just amazing to see how that works. Um, I just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm full right now. I'm full right now. I wanted to ask you about um, investing in yourself. Um, What's some ways that when we wake up in the morning, we can be intentional about investing in ourselves? Slowing down. Mm. Not rushing, like Mm. not waking up, jumping up, going to the first thing that's top of mind. You know, I got asked this question on an interview a um, couple of years ago by Katie Bowman is her name, Katie B. Mm. And she said, well, what's the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up? I said, lay there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we cracked up, but I was serious. I was like, I just lay there. I lay there and I'm like, wow, another day. Thank you, God. Mm. I made it through the night. Thank you, God. What are we doing today? What's on the agenda today? Like, I'm this is literally my process. Mm. You know, I I practice, I try very hard not to wake up and grab my phone. I just lay there and breathe and take in another day. Now, I'm a living kidney donor. I don't know if you knew that. Mm -mm. I gave my cousin a kidney about 12 years ago now, Mm. a blessing. And Mm. I've not had any issues. And I remember waking up in recovery after that surgery and looking up at the lights, Ahmad, I was like, oh, I'm still here. Mm. Because the night before I had Stood in the window. We were in Miami, Miami Beach at Jackson Memorial Hospital is where the surgery was. And I looked out at the ocean 
into like pitch blackness. It was just dark. I couldn't see, Mm -hmm. but I knew the ocean was there. That's a revelation for somebody. You have to see what you can't see. You just have to know it's there, Mm -hmm. right? That's how we create and manifest. And I said to God, these words, you've been good to me. I've had a wonderful life. So if I go in here tomorrow morning and wake up with you and my ancestors, Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that because I've had a great life. Mm -hmm. That was the contentment and the peace that I had. So the next morning we do the surgery. Hours later, I wake up in recovery and I see the lights and I hear voices and I hear my mom's voice. She's standing there. I have all these tubes all over me, everything. Mm-hmm. And I had the thought, I'm still here. Mm. Okay, God. Well, let's do it. Yeah. You know, let's do it. I'm still here. Oh, okay. So every day is a bonus to me. Every day. <laughs> is a bonus to me because in order for them to remove my kidney, major organ, one of my kidneys, to give it to my cousin, they had to completely stop my breathing. Mm. So in some ways, I died, right? Yeah. They had to completely stop my breathing. I was on a respirator. They had to completely stop my breathing so that there was no stress in my body when they removed the organ. Mm. So for God to sustain me and I still have breath. So when I wake up in the morning, I do that a lot. I breathe. I might journal. I might meditate. I'm also a sound healer. So I may play my bowls, you know, go in my room, my space, my sacred space, may play my my sound instruments. And then I sit in contemplation for a moment. And then I start my day. I also hike. So on the weekends, you know, I'm hiking five, six miles every time I'm out on the trails. I love the ocean. So if I can spend time by the water, I'm in heaven on earth, Mm. you know, I'm a water baby. And uh, it's finding the things that light you up. That's what you do. I just Mm. share some of the things I do. I encourage people, what lights you up? What do you love? Do that. Because Abraham Hicks, one one of my favorite resources of inspiration says, the better you feel, the more you allow. Mm. Mm. The better you feel, the more you allow. Mm. So my priority every day, Ahmad, is to feel good. Is to feel good in the highest vibrational ways. To be in alignment. To live in agreement with God so that I can have peace. That's my ultimate goal every day is to have peace so good can come to me like you did, like Revolution Mm. One did, like, you know, the clips going viral did. Mm. That's a result of living in alignment and in agreement with God who is in each of us. Not some big power and source out there. I believe divine Endowment and embodiment and divine intelligence is in each of us. Mm -hmm. God in us, the hope of glory in him. We live, move, and have our being. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Like I am a woman of faith, believing that I am an expression of God in the earth as me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe about each of us. We have the capacity to tap into that and live our best lives and create heaven on earth. Mm. When when I had saw when I had saw the uh interview you did on the Karen Hunter show when I had came across uh the interview uh it was just so powerful. And Thank uh you. I remember cuz you know I watched tons of 
tons of clips all the time, tons of interviews. Uh, I do it uh, for a living. So I watch so many of them. But something that stands out with you and I can hear it in the conversation that we're having now um, and a lot of people that that I, you know, try to clip up and stuff like that is because it's a stillness. You know, some people you hear and you can tell that they kind of know how to get people to, to tell people what they want to hear and put on a right. little show. And I just I, I like your poise in that interview. I like your poise in all your interviews and just your Thank presence, you. your energy and how you could just tell you wasn't trying to put nothing on. It was just like, okay, if it takes me 10 seconds to pause and think about how I'm about to answer this question, honestly, that's how I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to just be authentically me. And when I saw yeah. that and the way you were delivering your answers, I was like, she stepped in like on another level. Cause she <laughs> still, you know, I did an interview with mama soul a, a year, a couple a, about a year and a half ago. Something like I that. love her by the way. Thing. I just saw yes. her at the Kennedy center. Mm, um, at the concert MC with uh, MC Light, yeah, absolutely, and, and Cash Doll, and um, yes. um, a lot of other artists. Yes. Um, shout out to Mama Soul. I love Mama Soul. Uh, she's from my city, Flint. I know. know stand up. Um, but and she said the same thing. Um, just that stillness came from pain, and and just hearing you talk about um the stillness that came from um that that kidney surgery. I wanted to ask you about trust. Um, you being able to trust that things are going to be okay or or just to trust in 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 the higher power and trust in God. Um, what is your trust come now when it when it comes to opportunities or things that may cause you to get a little bit uneasy? Like where does that trust come? Does it come in the expected result or does it just come in like I'm gonna be okay? Because that in that instance, you accepted that it might not be okay underneath certain circumstances. Like it it might not be, I might have to um meet with with with, with my Lord and Savior, you know, but I trust that it's gonna go how it's supposed to go. How do you reach that understanding that I trust it's gonna happen how it's supposed to happen? <laughs> I have history with God. Mm. I have history with God. Mm. I've lost it all. <laughs> I've lost it all. Mm. Mm. Literally. Mm. I've been through foreclosure. I've had a car repossessed. I've had mm. to sell another home. I've been through divorce. I've had two abortions. I've had a miscarriage. I've mm. endured infidelity in a marriage. You know, mm. I myself have been caught. Um, or found or decided, let me just own that, you know, mm -hmm. I've been in adultery myself, you mm -hmm. know, and I don't say that to brag. I say it to say I have history with God. I've mm -hmm. lost it all. I've been betrayed by people that I trusted, that I thought will always be there. I've been laid off jobs. I've been terminated from jobs. And guess what? Mm -hmm. It always works out. Mm -hmm. I don't mm. know how, but it does. Mm. And that for me is the template. You know, I had very, very, very difficult times early. And I often say I had my hard times early because God can trust me to be transparent now and moving forward to share with other people if God did it for me, God will do it for you. Mm. This is how you do it. This is how you endure until you can enjoy. Trust, mm. surrender, agree with God so you can have peace. That's Job 22. Agree mm. with God quickly is what the Amplified Version says. So you can have peace and good will come to you. Mm. And I've been in the entertainment industry for over 40 years now. You know, I worked mm. um, at BET for 18 years. I currently mm. work in the mayor's office here in Washington, D.C. of entertainment. I work in the film division. You know, so I've been around and behind the curtain mm. of what entertains people. So I know what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. So authenticity mm. is one of the tenets of soul wealth. It's vision, compassion, authenticity, abundance, and legacy. So I know what's authentic. And I say and have said to people often, you know, what you see in music videos, that's not real. 
mm-hmm. you see on reality TV, that's edited. That's an edited experience. Yes. So I I've walked through the fire and come out and have endured a lot. Have like I said, I've lost it all, literally. Mm-hmm. Like in that clip you went where I said I went home and said, you can have everything. I can replace things. I'm back. Meaning I'm back to myself. I'm mm. back. I'm no longer the person believing the mirage. I'm no longer the person tapped into distractions. I am now the person following the road less travel. I'm going that way. When people are zigging, I'm zagging. Mm. You know, my situational awareness is on 10,000. Right. And it's had to be because that is what I've done professionally. Mm. So I have that understanding professionally. I just apply it personally, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. I'm an observer. I'm the person in the room of thousands of people in the corner. Watch, Mm. observing. I'm the person that gets on an airplane and looks for the exit door. Mm. As, As many times as I have flown, thousands of flights. I listen to the safety briefing every time I'm on a plane. Mm. I want it to be top of mind. When they say look for the nearest exit, it could be in front of you. It could be behind you. That's me. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm like, y'all be quiet. (laughs) You know, because we make a lot of assumptions. And one of my favorite books, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz says, always do your best. Don't make assumptions. Be impeccable with your word, right? And don't take things personal. Mm. I don't make assumptions. I don't assume that I'm going to remember from the last time I flew what to do if something happens this time. So it's about being also a my intentional. Mm. That stillness comes from intentionality. It comes from understanding that I want to leave people better than they were. Mm. After I'm gone, I want them to be better after an encounter with me. And I mean that. Like that's that's who mm. I am. Mm. That's that that's that's so deep for me because I wanted to ask you uh, of all the people you work with, um, what do you find is the most common thread that people like the most common obstacle that people come with or that they bring to you? Like I'm having this problem in my life. Like what's the most common thing that you hear? Lack of courage. Mm. Cause people don't need advice. They already mm. know what to do. <laughs> they just want somebody else to tell them what they already know. In case it doesn't work, they have somebody to blame. Mm. So I say, I don't give advice. I ask you questions because the questions I ask you are going to activate the answers that are already within you. God Mm. is in me just like God is in you. You already know. So it's a lack of courage. And the lack of courage comes from the lack of clarity. That's why stillness is important. That's why I love hiking. That's why I love being in the woods, on the trail. That's why I love Mm. sitting at the ocean, just listening to the water, you know, sound healing, meditating. Contemplation is one of my favorite things to do because I'm eliminating distractions. I'm practicing my singleness of focus, right? I'm practicing knowing that stuff is going on in my periphery, but Mm. being so focused and committed to where I am in that present moment, I believe, um, gosh, his name is escaping me. It'll come back to me in a moment. But uh, he talks about present moment awareness. Mm. Nothing like it. Because it doesn't matter what's going on this way. This is where my solutions are. When I'm focused, mm. when I'm focused. Mm. Um, that, That's that, where that stillness runs deep because mm. I'm focused. And again, mm. people are zigging, Vicky is zagging. Know that. Mm. 
Yeah. So even um, I heard you in another interview, I think it was the unscripted podcast, um, if I'm not mistaken, and you were talking about being the middle child growing up. I'm the middle child as well in my family. Um, and I just wanted to know, what, what do you think? How do you think that that's affected your life and what comes with that type of middle child syndrome? Like, because I know every different dynamic has a different effect. If you're the oldest, if you're the youngest, if, you know, def- depending on your family structure in general. But what, what do you think of that that's done or how, how that's impacted your life? Definitely the middle child stereotype is is what I've worked through, you know, mm. the peacekeeper. Mm. The, the neutral party can't we all get along mm. go to go to right mm. because the balance is in the middle just think mm. when you're trying to balance something the whole mm. point of that is to get it in harmony mm. and that usually is at the center so mm. now you hear a lot of conversations especially spiritually where they're like okay well this is centered in that's the middle child. The middle child is the center of a thing, of a family mm-hmm. unit most times. And with that comes a spoken and unspoken expectation that you're going to be the neutral party. Mm. And that has been my experience. Ooh. Does that come with silence? Does that come with si- Absolutely. Inner silencing? Ooh. Absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely, because usually the middle child has an opinion about both sides. Ooh. Right? <laughs> mm. And because we then have the capacity to love both sides, mm. you don't want to choose. Mm. So you you commit to most times, I'm sure there are exceptions, mm. but most times we commit to trying to find a point of reconciliation. Mm. How can we fix this? Like, how can we bridge this? Because we're family. That That's where I find most middle children share. We share mm. that. Mm. That's great. I'm, we're I'm, thinkers. I'm, I'm, we're critical yes. thinkers. And that's why I love hiking. You know, mm. do I step on this rock? Do I go this way? Do I leap over it? Right? Like you got to think and you have to take your time Mm. because if you rush, you risk injury. Mm. It's the same in life. You have to take your time, Mm. assess. Okay. If I go this way, this is possible. If I go this way, this is possible. Mm. And all it takes is one time for you to make a misstep and Mm. have some consequences for you to be like, okay, I won't do that again. Mm. You know, I remember growing up, um, you know, my elders used to say, I used to hear some of my aunts and uncles talking like, oh, get the baby, get the baby. Don't let the baby touch the stove. And then the other aunt or uncle is like, let them touch it. They won't touch it Mm. again. Yeah, Yeah. that's how I used to, yeah. Let them touch it. They won't touch it again. Mm. And sometimes we have to experience a lesson for it to remain, for Mm. us to remember it. Sometimes we have to experience it. And I also say, well, sometimes you can also learn the same lesson by observing somebody else experiencing it. Mm -hmm. That's where you are now approaching mastery because you can learn from observation. Mm-hmm. instead of experience. That's deep. That's <laughs> deep. Mm. And it, it just, it it made me think about just being a a, a people pleaser, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and just, see, because you're giving me a lot of downloads right now. I'm just like, wow, because I was having a conversation with somebody uh, probably a few months ago, and it was just about the timeliness of my responses, you know, like sometimes we just take time. We, like you said, we, we, we weigh the options we do. And to some people that's not passionate. It's not love because we're just very like, 
what is the Deliver best course of action so I don't break anything right now, so I don't destroy anything right now. And it's like, it comes off not loving because we think love is fast. We think love is this and that. And love sometimes, it's very kind of, love is quiet, it's slow sometimes. It's it's It can be silent sometimes. And I think we don't hear about that part. We don't hear about the slow love. We don't hear about just being quiet in your spirit and thinking stuff out because it's like, we just want immediate attention and not the right solution, not the right medicine. We just want any medicine. Like, just give me right. something. Can you give me something right now? And it's like, right. no, I'm trying to give you the right thing. Let me shuffle through this real quick so I can get the right thing. And when you said that, I'm like, Ooh, that's the one because I ran into that so many times. And I'm like, why am I like that? It's just like, I can't give you a quick response. I have to think, but that's just me as a person. I have to think about what I'm about to say right now. Like I, I, you just told, said a lot. And if I, the first thing I say, I'll guarantee you it's not going to be the right thing. It's not going to be the right thing. If my emotions is all over the place, give me a second, you know? And right. Woo. And that is, let me just insert here. Deepak Chopra is who talked about present moment. Yes. Let me just go back and add that. But I think it's also important to insert here that an appropriate answer, this is mm. going to really bless somebody. Mm. An appropriate answer is, I need a moment. Mm. That's the answer. It's not yes, it's not no. The answer is, I need a moment. I need some time. I'll get back with you. Mm. So you asked me about trust. That's where the trust comes from. Mm. And that, let me say, this is important. Mm. I'm originally from Florida, Fort mm. Lauderdale. Yes. Both of my great grandmothers are full-blooded Native Americans. Mm. I'm named after one. One of my great grandmothers is Victoria. And um, one was a Creek Indian. The other was a Cherokee. OK, mm. I say that because that's where my affinity for the sound healing comes from, where the hiking and the ocean and, you know, that's where all of that comes from. It's in me. It's in my DNA. So I wa I love to be barefoot. I love to walk barefoot. And now I understand that also comes from me receiving the support of the earth. Mm -hmm. knowing that I'm held, knowing that I'm safe. I say that because, and I said it earlier, things always work out. Mm -hmm. It might not be according to my script, but it's always according to God's plan for me. Mm -hmm. I know God doesn't bless me to curse me. I know God isn't going to drop me. Mm -hmm. So I talk to God just like I'm talking to you. Okay, well, it, work it out. Mm. I know you're going to do it because you always do. I'll wait. Mm. I've heard because you speak about... Scripture says no, in, your, in your patience is where you possess your soul. That's mm. where you possess your emotions. So when people are impatient, their emotions are all over the place mm. because your soul is the seat of your emotions and your patience is where you possess your soul. So your level of patience really is a gauge for the wellness or lack thereof emotionally. Mm. So mm. you talked about, I need to take some time. That's patience. Mm. I heard you on another podcast. You had uh it was a powerful quote. You said, um, I think it was uh the question was raised, what is authenticity? And you said, so you reacted the question, you said, What is authenticity? You said authenticity is ease. And um it's when you are acting your like your most self and it just comes with ease. You know you're being authentic because it comes with ease. And I wanted to ask about um just the, the philosophy, the philosophy of ease, because I hear you speak about it a lot. Um, 
just basically doing what serves you. Like if it doesn't serve you, then you have to kind of go with that flow. But where do you think perseverance or in these different other concepts like factor into that? Like, how do you know when something is like, because I, I it's a, it's a quote that it probably, probably a lot of people know. Um, It's like good things are at the opposite side of difficulty. Like, what do you think about like a quote like that? Like, what, what do you, what do you think? That growth happens in the sphere of discomfort. Mm. That's true. Mm. I heard Stedman Graham say at a conference that my good friend Ari Squires was doing. He said, there is no growth in the comfort zone and there is no comfort in the growth zone. And that resonates with me because I'm an athlete. I played basketball for about 16 years. I left Florida and came to the D.C. area on a full basketball scholarship to attend Howard University. So I understand what it means to show up when you don't feel like it, to Mm. show up when you're in pain, to show up and play Mm. with people you might not like. But in this particular context, you have to learn how to be together, Mm. a team, right? That's what team sports is about. And that's where it comes from, for me, being able to morph into who I need to be in that moment to get something done. Mm. And those skills transferred into life, my adult life after playing ball and my teammates and I, a lot of, a lot of them are still my lifelong friends and sisters. Um, But the ease comes from my commitment to feeling good. I mean, Mm -hmm. if something doesn't feel good, I'm not doing it. I don't care who it is. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't feel good, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got this revelation of mine some years ago Mm. about revolution. Mm. Revolution, personal revolution always looks like and is labeled as rebellion Mm. to people who lose the advantage. Mm. When you revolt, you go against the status quo. And usually there's somebody benefiting from you following the status quo. Mm. You come to a place of awareness, come to yourself. You're like, I'm not doing that that anymore. Mm. Somebody's going to be upset because in in that blind spot, I have a really dear sister friend, um, Latanya Taylor, she talks about turning blind spots into breakthroughs. We all Mm. have blind spots. So in that blind spot, somebody's benefiting from your blind spot. When the light is shown on that blind spot and you now see what's there, you're like, oh, okay, we can be free. I can be Mm. free. Huh. Well, let me pursue my freedom. Somebody's not going to be happy about that. Because they were benefiting from you being in bondage. And they knew you were in bondage and didn't tell you. Mm. So when you come into a space of awareness and you start revolting, there are some people who are going to call you rebellious, but it's not that. You just got a revelation of freedom. And that revelation required you to revolt or start a revolution. And Mm -hmm. every single group of people who had to fight for their freedom after they got that revolution is a part of history that some people still today are trying to erase. Mm. Apartheid was what it was. Slavery was what it was, whether you like it or not, whether it makes Mm. you feel bad or not. No, you weren't there, but your ancestors were, just like my ancestors were. So they had to revolt. The civil rights movement was a revolution. Mm. Apartheid was a revolution. The Underground Railroad was a revolution Mm. against the status quo of people 
who wanted to preserve their advantage. That's where that self-awareness comes in Mm -hmm. and that that flow. And when you get that revelation, you realize I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do. I don't should people. You should. I don't do that. This is what you should do. I don't do that. I challenge people. I ask questions. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What feels in alignment with your journey? Because the truth is, the only adult we have control over is the one in the mirror. Mm -hmm. My mom says all the time, if you like it, I love it. <laughs> if you can live with it, I can look at it. <laughs> Hello. My mom is a master at minding her business. Mm. I love her for that. I got that from her. She's mm. masterful at it. You know, she's like, okay. <laughs> okay. Because mm. I want to preserve my peace. Dr. Oz, you remember um, Dr. Oz, the Dr. Yes. Oz show? Some years ago, he did a show on heart disease and women. Mm. And medically, he started explaining that we each are born with a certain amount of heartbeats. Mm. And when those heartbeats, whatever that number is, everybody has a number. And whenever that number runs out, people die of natural causes. Mm. You know, some people die prematurely from an accident or disease or sickness or illness. But people who grow old and just transition in their sleep because they just their heart just stopped. Mm. Right. That's because they used up whatever allocation of heartbeats they were given before they came into this Mm. life. Mm. The revelation I got on my was that. "Mm, I only have a certain number of heartbeats. This is where the ease comes from. Mm. I only have a certain number of heartbeats. Well, I need to start asking before I do anything, before I commit to anything or anyone, is this experience worth one of my heartbeats? Mm. Because I can't get it back. Mm. (laughs) Mm. Do I want to give up? So, you know, I have a heartbeat budget. Mm. Is this worth one of my heartbeats? Is this worth what it's going to cost me and heartbeats to experience? And if it's not, and I'm serious, I ask this question all day, every day. Is this worth one of my heartbeats? Mm. Or 10 or 100? Mm. Or 1,000? Because if I only have a trillion, right? I need to make Mm. sure I'm allocating each Heartbeat to what matters to me. You talked mm-hmm. about that people pleasing earlier. After I saw that Dr. Oz show, I was delivered. Mm. Everything's a message. Everything can be a message to you when you're clear. Everything Listen, messages come everywhere. Life changing. I get messages. messages all the time. And that's mm. a that's a pivotal one for me. Mm. I need to check my heartbeat budget. Mm. I wanted to ask you this question, this last question. Okay. And I ask I ask guests this some sometimes if I can tell they tuned in. Um but what would you call this phase of your life? What would you what would you call this phase of your life? Legacy. Mm. Mm. I'm creating my legacy, being intentional about it. And I'm not just creating it, I'm living it. Mm. I don't want to just create a legacy for other people to enjoy when I'm all, no longer here. Mm. I am living my legacy every day. Mm. That's why I'm intentional. That's why I pause. Mm. That's why I contemplate. Mm. That's why I'm fully present in this moment. Mm. Because it's important to me how you experience me. Mm. And how the people you share me with experience me because it's mm. about legacy. Legacy is top of mind for me. I want to leave a dinosaur imprint in the mm. earth and I want to flood the earth with soul wealth. 
I say. Can you tell them where they can find you, your website and, and, and your social media? That's crazy. The SOS thing just went off on my phone. Isn't that crazy? Mm. <laughs> oh my God, really? Stop. <laughs> VickiJohnson.com. Mm. V-I-K-K-I Johnson.com. And I am on all social media platforms at all things Vicky. And Vicky mm. is V-I-K-K-I. Thank you, Ahmad. This is really Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for spending these few moments with us. This is this is my soul wealth. I needed this. <laughs> I needed some soul wealth. This is Dr. This Vicky is Johnson. So cool. Thank Ahmad you for all that you do. Thank you for that. Because thank it's you. not a small thing. I really deeply appreciate the effort and the intentionality that you put into the content that you share with us. And we're all better for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, you, you gonna, you're gonna shine. You, you've been shining for a long time and when stuff is undeniable, it's undeniable. You gotta put it out there. It's like, Oh, this is golden, you know? And I just appreciate you sharing that, that wealth with us today. It's Dr. Vicki Johnson, the mother poet, and we will see you guys in the next conversation. Peace. Peace.